Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining AWS and Equinix. Appreciate you joining us this morning to talk about the best of both worlds, hybrid solutions overview uh, with Equinix and AWS Outpost. Uh, first, before we get started, a little housekeeping, just a friendly reminder that all lines have been placed on mute for today's presentation. Uh, we ask that any questions be put into the chat window. We will answer them during the call and at the end of the presentation as time allows. We will be following up with each of you with customized conversations specific to your environment and your innovation goals. So thank you again for joining us. Welcome to this webinar session. We'll be discussing Outpost and hybrid cloud best practices. The whole goal is to empower you and your business goals. I want to thank AWS team for enabling this joint session today. Together with AWS and Equinix, we are helping our customers transform their digital business. The Equinix teams work extensively with AWS to bring customers proven methods to connect their hybrid world, bringing unique solutions to fit your specific environment and your stage in your cloud journey. What we love about working with AWS is that they consistently demonstrate their interest in the customer's holistic hybrid and multi-cloud environment. They truly have their customer's best interest in mind at all times. And understand that optimization is critical to your long-term success. When I think about Outpost and why it's so relevant in the marketplace, it's because it's helping customers achieve the right balance. It's accelerating your transformation to a digital ready infrastructure. It's leveraging a hybrid environment. It's optimizing everything you're doing in AWS with your tools. It's helping overcome and unblock impediments to innovation. The balance and the consistency achieved by removing the legacy constraints of IT infrastructure is what's enabling our customers to deploy between cloud and straddle their on-premise and cloud environments and address some of the challenges that uh, Outposts can present. So what we're doing together is optimizing scale performance and deployment times, price point and TCO. I'd like to introduce our speakers today. Uh, we have Brad Kirby, he's an AWS Principal Outpost Specialist, we'll be discussing Outpost and the merits of the solution. Gene McComb, Principal Solutions Architect at Equinix, uh, who is our principal solution architect who knows everything about AWS and is dedicated to the solution here. Same with Colin Lowry. He's our alliance director, completely dedicated to AWS, and Ed Bastel, who's our solution edge specialist. Again, these are kind of what we're going to be addressing. Uh, this is the breakdown of the discussion topics today. Obviously, we're very much focused today on the uh, benefits of Outpost solutions and deploying those solutions, delivering it, and operationalizing it uh, at Equinix globally. And again, it is about achieving the right balance. Uh, that is a, a big theme for today. It's something that we're seeing is pervasive across uh, all of our customers. Hybrid has really become the de facto standard and we're working together to remove any friction uh, to deploying an outpost solution, helping customers uh, advance and leverage more of the AWS tools that they've come to know and love. I just want to start with how this conversation is starting off with our customers. Uh, every customer we go in and talk to says, I have a cloud first strategy. The next thing they say is they want out of the data center business. And that's giving rise to this off premise solution. If you notice the two trend lines, both AWS and Equinix are rising, while the legacy siloed infrastructure that customers are maintaining has been steadily dropping. The reason why both of the public cloud and the off-prem is rising together is due to adjacency and the need to address all the scale, security and performance concerns that I've, that I've touched on just a moment ago. It's bringing customers into a global interconnection facility directly adjacent to the AWS cloud and providing a fantastic home for the outpost solution uh, to live and to thrive in your environment. To punctuate the investment between the two companies, uh, it, currently Equinix uh, hosts a, a large portion of AWS critical edge node infrastructure. It make, we make it very easy to get onto AWS and provide a fantastic place for the outpost uh, to be deployed with consistency and all the requirements that, that, it, uh, that it brings. So without further delay, I would like to introduce Brad Kirby, 
to discuss the benefits of outposts. Brad, take it away. Great, Todd, thank you uh, very much. Uh, as Todd mentioned, my name is Brad Kirby. I'm a principal outpost specialist here at AWS. And I, I wanted to kick off the conversation here discussing why we developed Outposts and the, the great partnership that we have with Equinix. So next slide, please. Okay, I, I wanna play a little bit off of the theme of achieving balance that uh, Todd mentioned previously. So we, we know that there's been a significant move uh, to the public cloud within many organizations, but at the same time, uh, We've also recognized that certain applications need to remain on premises. And the three key use cases that we've identified here are latency sensitive workloads. So you can imagine a situation in which uh, you have an application that needs to control equipment on a factory floor or needs to uh, integrate with a mainframe or perhaps is uh, developing or delivering AR VR capabilities uh, to an audience. These are all latency sensitive, um, where you need to be able to bring the application workload uh, as close to the users or other systems as possible. The second one is local data processing. So think of this uh, as a situation where you have a large data repository uh, on premise and you need to perform transcoding operations, filtering or caching operations, uh, or, or situations in which you have uh, an ML model that was trained in the region, but you want to apply uh, that model as close uh, to the, the data source as possible. And then the third use case that we talk about quite a bit is uh, data residency, where you have organizations that uh, want to take advantage of cloud capabilities, but uh, they don't reside in a geography within AWS region and, and they have stringent uh, data residency uh, requirements. So next slide, please. So we, we talked about those situations in which uh, the workload may need to remain on premises, but the fact remains that customers really want to have that same AWS cloud experience, irrespective of where uh, their, their infrastructure lies. Uh, they wanna have access to the same uh, reliable high performance infrastructure that they're able to enjoy in the AWS region. Uh, they wanna drive operational consistency across their on-premises and cloud workloads. They wanna be able to use the same services and APIs. Uh, they wanna be able to use the same tool sets and automation mechanisms. And really the, the end result here is they want these on-premises workloads to move at cloud speed and benefit from the same pace of innovation uh, that they enjoy in the AWS region today. Next slide, please. So this is where uh, Outposts comes into the picture. Outpost is really made to deliver AWS cloud infrastructure where the customer needs it and Equinix is a key partner in enabling this to happen. So you can think of Outposts as the same Nitro-based infrastructure that we deploy in the AWS region today, packaged for delivery in an Equinix data center uh, or the customer's premises, connected back to the AWS region. Really critical part of this is, oops, we could go back one, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, there we go. Really critical piece of this is that AWS outposts are fully managed by AWS. So uh, the customer no longer has to take the responsibility for firmware and device driver updates, hypervisor updates. Uh, that's all taken care of. And also really important here is this single pane of management. So you no longer have this bifurcated on-premises and cloud management paradigm everyone is able to uh, manage infrastructure through the same AWS management console, the same CLI, uh, you know, the same API sets. And again, um, Equinix is a really important partner with 200 plus locations across the globe uh, to enable this, to enable AWS to host outposts uh, where they need to land. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, two uh, use cases where customers have uh, implemented solutions on outposts. Uh, the first here is uh, First Abu Dhabi Bank. Uh, they were really interested in transforming uh, their end user banking experience and enabling uh, more content uh, through mo mobile applications. Another important part uh, of their process here is they wanted to start to modernize uh, their applications. So they decided to uh, deploy outposts uh, in UAE. Uh, currently there, there isn't an AWS region in uh, uh, United Arab Emirates. So Outpost was a great solution for them. Uh, their current application set uh, is deployed on EKS and they have, uh, or Elastic uh, Kubernetes service. Uh, they have multiple AWS outposts located throughout uh, Abu Dhabi uh, and uh, Dubai. And really the whole idea here was that they saw the opportunity to leverage AWS services to accelerate this transformation but they needed a, a vehicle to deliver those services within their country uh, and Outpost served as a, a great mechanism uh, to do that. Next slide, please. Okay, another uh, really interesting uh, example here uh, is Typico and, and internet gaming and, and gaming, I think in general are just great examples of, of the Outpost use case. Um, there's an element of uh, improving latency uh, for, for the users uh, that are taking advantage of the service. And then in the case of internet gaming, uh, because these are uh, regulated platforms, uh, they're often data residency requirements as well. So Typico um, is an iGaming uh, provider uh, that is based in Germany. Uh, they wanted to uh, expand into the United States uh, U.S. regulations actually require that uh, the gaming data uh, reside uh, in the, the state uh, where the service is being delivered. And so Typico is in the process of using uh, Outpost to uh, really take advantage of, uh, of that demand or, or service that demand. And I think if you look at the benefits here, uh, some of the key ones are they, they have indicated to AWS that they were able to enter the US market uh, five to 10 times faster because they were able to take that workload that resides in AWS today and easily adapt that uh, to the outposts. Uh, speaking to the latency point, uh, they were uh, able to reduce the time required to place a bet from uh, upwards of 500 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds. And they were able to onboard their engineering team uh, very, very quickly, again, because they're using the same tools and processes that they use uh, to interact with the AWS region. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, here, here is the thing. Here's uh, what an outpost looks like. It's a standard 42U rack. Uh, it comes fully assembled and ready to be rolled into your data center. So. As an IT organization, you're not faced with a process of, okay, what storage vendor do I need to select? What compute vendor do I need to select? Whose networking should I use? Uh, it's a fairly easy uh, template of um, services that uh, you, you select uh, to put in your outpost. It's installed by AWS and simply uh, plugged into power in the network. And uh, the components within the AWS uh, outpost are redundant, so redundant power, uh, redundant networking, and uh, the ability to provision capacity uh, that can uh, you know, deliver N plus one redundancy for the hosts within uh, the outpost. And one of the key elements of outpost and what makes it so powerful is the fact that it's connected back uh, to the AWS region. So we'll talk about some of the services that are resident on the outpost itself. Uh, but you're also able to avail yourself to the services that reside uh, in the AWS region. So connectivity is important uh, and Equinix is really a critical element in providing that trusted connectivity uh, essential for successful outpost deployments. You really wanna make sure that you have a 
reliable, high performance connection uh, back to the AWS region. So you can not only take advantage of all the services that are running locally, but uh, take it advantage of all of the services that are running in the AWS region. Next slide, please. Okay, this uh, slide gives you uh, a taste of some of the services uh, that run on the outpost. Uh, we've curated a set of services that are most likely uh, to be used by services, uh, sorry, by customers on premises. That of course starts with uh, Amazon EC2 and EBS uh, and S3, but also extends to our container orchestration platforms like Amazon Elastic Container Service, uh, Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, and uh, capabilities like uh, Amazon Elastic Cache for uh, edge caching, uh, application load balancer, EMR, uh, RDS, and others. So uh, the idea for many organizations is uh, you want to be able to take advantage of uh, that proximity uh, to other workloads uh, to run those AWS services. Uh, we allow you uh, to do that uh, with uh, the, the AWS outposts. And many organizations that are modernizing uh, applications choose to start that process on the outpost so that they can uh, modernize uh, in pieces and eventually move uh, to the public cloud. Next slide, please. I wanted to talk uh, a little bit as well about an upcoming uh, AWS outpost form factor. Uh, this is coming in 21, uh, toward 2021, towards the end of this year. Uh, and uh, there are two solutions here. One is a, a 2U uh, single server form factor uh, that's uh, on, based on Intel architecture. The second is a 1U single server uh, arc, uh, system based on the Graviton uh, architecture. Uh, the uh, 1U and 2U outposts will run EC2, ECS, uh, and EKS locally. And these are really ideal uh, for workloads that uh, require low latency and local processing. So you can imagine um, uh, needing to have infrastructure in a retail outlet uh, or a restaurant. Uh, these are gonna be a, a perfect mechanism for doing this. And one of the things that we'll be working on is uh, it's not going to be possible to send an AWS technician with uh, each of these 1U and 2U uh, systems. So there will be a simple device installation either by uh, your uh, own IT staff or Equinix staff uh, or uh, somebody else who is uh, you know, ready to perform that installation on the customer's behalf. Next slide, please. Okay, I also wanted to briefly mention uh, then you may just have to, this may be a build, sorry, there you go. Thank you, Todd. Uh, I also wanted to mention uh, the countries that are supported. We're supported in over 51 uh, countries today. And this is really where we have such a great uh, relationship with Equinix and in, in the fact that they have uh, 200 locations uh, across the globe. Uh, Todd flashed some of those up earlier, and I think they really overlap quite well uh, with the countries uh, in which outposts are supported. So um, one area that I'm working on in particular is we have uh, a number of organizations, uh, ISVs, that are looking to deploy multi-tenant uh, SaaS solutions in geographies without uh, an AWS uh, data center, and they, they want to be able to host that uh, in, a, in a tier three facility. So many of those customers will look to partners like Equinix as really a key element in being able to deliver their service uh, to, to the end users uh, in those regions as they, they themselves look to expand their business. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, three steps to getting started with Outpost. It's a fairly straightforward process here. Uh, the first thing that you'll do is through the AWS console, uh, you will select uh, your compute and storage capacity. Uh, after that, you'll go through uh, a number of briefings with the AWS team. We'll make sure that uh, you know, all of uh, you know, the, the networking and power facilities uh, are 
uh, configured the way that they need to be. Of course, if you're working with Equinix, that's already been uh, sorted through and, and you're ready to go. Uh, the next stage here is to uh, install uh, the outpost. So AWS staff members will deliver and install uh, the, the outpost, whether that's in your data center or an off-premises data center, uh, like Equinix is, is offering and Todd explained earlier. And then the last part of this is once everything is connected back uh, to the AWS region, you can start to use your outpost. And again, it, it's going to be the same experience that you're used to uh, leveraging services within uh, the AWS region today. And that's it for me. And uh, I will pass the floor over to Colin. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. Let's talk about why Equinix data centers and our locations are best suited for AWS Outpost. At Equinix, we've invested heavily in our uh, global data center portfolio with over 220 data centers globally in 26 countries, 63 metros, and five continents. But Equinix is a lot more than just a data center company. We're an interconnection leader. What does that mean? 36 of our locations, AWS is place, AWS Direct Connect, where you can connect your uh, on-prem IT environment and your AWS Outposts to the AWS cloud. This is a busy chart, lots of uh, dots here and gray lines. But what those gray lines are showing is our Equinix fabric, which is our carrier grade network that we've built where you can connect all your IT deployments within Equinix around the world in 45 on-ramp locations. Layered on top of this network, we have 11 network edge locations that have been placed strategically around the world. And this allows you to deploy uh, virtual um, uh, networking devices and um, firewalls that pair perfectly with the AWS Outpost networking requirements. Another reason why uh, Equinix is an interconnection leader is that we have over 1,800 network service providers and over 2,900 cloud IT providers within our data centers that you can connect to. These are probably customers and business partners that you're with today, and you can connect to uh, via CrossConnect. And then of course, we have our six nines of global uptime and reliability, uh, then 24-7 physical security of our data centers and your IT environment. And then we have our 100% renewable power pledge uh, that we're sitting at 92% achieving right now with a goal to be at 100% by 2024. Todd, let's look at some of our uh, data centers in the next slide. Here's a small sample portion of our data centers, five here. Um, but inside all these data centers, while they might look different, you get the same services of the uptime, the network benefits, and the physical security. These uh, data centers range from 50,000 square feet to 500,000 square feet. And you can go online at Equinex today and do a virtual tour, or after this webinar, connect with us, and we'll arrange an in-person uh, tour as well. In the next slide, let's talk about all the Equinix solutions that pair with AWS Outpost well for the best hybrid cloud experience. For data centers, we have our IBXs, which stands for International Business Exchange Data Centers. These are our retail data centers that are at the edge where you'll co-locate your outpost or with your other IT environment. Our X-scale data centers are typically for CSP hyperscale customers where one or two customers will exist in a single data center. But we have our interconnection services, and again, this is what separates Equinix from the other colo companies. We have our cross connects that allow you to connect to your other business partners and customers within um, Equinix data centers. And then our Equinix Internet Exchange, which is the largest global peering platform. 80% of the global internet flows through Equinix data centers and our network. And then I talked about earlier our Equinix fabric, but in a single console, you can manage your on-prem, AWS, CSP, and SaaS provider solutions all in a single console, making that a lot easier to manage in a complex IT world. At Equinix, we've also invested heavily in our edge service technology. And I'll talk about this in more detail later, but again, our network edge allows you to deploy virtual routers and firewalls, which you need for your AWS Outpost uh, deployment. You can deploy those within minutes as well. And then again, our 36 AWS Direct Connect locations where you can connect with low latency and secure connection to the AWS cloud. And then let's talk about why we're all here today. And Brad touched on them earlier, but the solutions that you're looking for. There are three use cases that we've experienced a lot of success in with AWS is low latency applications, data residency, and local data processing. We had a large global gaming customer where their end customers and gaming users needed a lower latency in metros that were just a little too far away from the AWS availability zones. By deploying their outpost 
With Equinix, they were able to achieve that low latency for their gaming customers and provide a better in-game experience. And then we have data residency, where governments and regulators continue to have more regulations requiring for customer data and the operation to run in the municipality or state or country that operation is happening in. Sports betting is a big industry that we've experienced a lot of uh, success here in. Uh, 25 states in America right now allow sports betting, with six more coming online uh, this year in 2021. We had a customer that deployed uh, an outpost in the state they're operating in, achieving those regulations, but also improving their operation and customer experience for their in-app and uh, online gaming or sports betting platform. And then local data processing. This is where you like, collect the data and process it next year on-prem solutions. The manufacturing industry is a perfect example uh, here where you need to place an outpost in an Equinix data center that's close to your manufacturing facility to have a su successful assembly line and production environment. I wanna leave you with one last key benefit of AWS Outpost today, and that is the egress fees that you're not paying for any workloads that run inside your AWS Outposts to the public internet. That's a key benefit, and I uh, hope you all recognize that. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Gene McComb, our solutions architect here at Equinix, dedicated to AWS. Thank you, Colin. Yeah, so today we're gonna to go over a couple of solutions of, of how Equinix customers are deploying uh, AWS outposts inside of Equinix facilities. In this specific diagram, it's a high level diagram. You'll notice, I'd like you to focus in on the red box, uh, which is our Equinix data center. And to the far left, you'll notice that the this is an existing customer with their existing enterprise IT infrastructure already built inside of Equinix. And these customers are leveraging AWS Outposts along with our Equinix fabric to get to AWS Direct Connect for uh, accessing services in AWS cloud, as well as accessing other uh, SaaS providers and internet connectivity service providers from the fabric. And then on the far left, you'll notice that the customer is also connecting back to their end customers, business offices, and partners. The real advantage of AWS Outposts is they can seamlessly scale these services at the edge to not only reach their end users, but AWS as well. It provides, as Colin and others have mentioned, low latency access to applications, local data processing, and the ability to meet data residency requirements. And then finally, with the 1800 plus service providers that Equinix has on a global level, there's a good possibility that there's several hundred available last mile networks that customers can connect to and very, like, very likely that it's a uh, partner that you're already working with. So that's a real advantage of bringing in the AWS Outpost inside of Equinix as an existing customer. Next slide. So in this example, this would be a brand new customer coming into Equinix. Um, let's say this brand new customer was you know, born in the cloud um, and they've done everything so far in the cloud, but now they need an on-premise solution. Some of these customers do not have uh, the high IT hardware to deploy. Maybe they don't have the IT staff to support uh, that kind of hardware. So in this scenario, what we're working with customers on is to deploy our Equinix network edge service. And as others have already mentioned, this is the ability for customers to deploy uh, network uh, firewalls and routers in a virtual way within minutes rather than waiting days or weeks to set up actual physical hardware inside of the data center. And again, this gives them all the access to be able to leverage uh, both the AWS Outposts to AWS Cloud, as well as uh, AWS Outposts to their wide area network, reaching all those uh, uh, other end customers, business offices, and partners uh, that you see on the left. Next slide. And then finally, I'd like to touch on a, on a use case that both Equinix and Amazon worked on together. Uh, this was a customer, it was an online gaming customer that was deploying hybrid cloud with AWS Outposts to improve their user experience across the globe. The customer's challenge is, is that they were launching a brand new global online game and they needed a better user experience for their gaming users at, at the day of launch. So the solution for them was to deploy AWS Outposts in several of our Equinix facilities, as well as AWS Direct Connect 
to reach thousands of gamers within a specific market or region that they were trying to enter into. The outcomes for this customer was that they experienced a very low latency uh, and a quality user experience for their gaming community. Not only that, it allowed the customer to deploy faster to market um, by deploying AWS Outpost because they were ordered, uh, installed, or excuse me, ordered, delivered, and installed by AWS. And we were able to get these into our facilities in a very quick, quick manner. Next slide. Great. Now I'll introduce Ed, and Ed will talk to you more about uh, more detail about our Network Edge service. Ed? Thank you, Gene. All right. So Network Edge is our virtual solution for bringing up a network appliance to connect to the Equinix fabric. It's for managing fast, multi-cloud, and service provider connections. Network Edge becomes a networking hub, taking advantage of the Equinix fabric and the 2,900 plus providers that are available for quick virtual connections. And we offer a multi-vendor approach. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, it, it encompasses routers, firewalls, and SD-WAN. Network Edge provides fast access, low latency, and higher throughput to the service providers your business needs to connect to. With customers that need to deploy in AWS regions where they have no equipment, Network Edge becomes that solution to quickly connect to AWS within minutes. Network Edge is completely virtual. You start by selecting your vendor, obtain subscription licensing, or even bring your own licensing. We offer a variety of vendor device sizes and options. Think of Network Edge as an extension of the Equinix fabric. Now you're adding the routing, firewall, and SD-WAN capabilities. Virtual connections are software-defined, they're dynamic. Uh, within minutes, an AWS Direct Connect can be set up. It's just a few clicks in our Fabric portal to set up the service. And the Fabric and Network Edge are all API-based. So that means it fits into your IT automation design. And Terraform is now supported to script and create your digital infrastructure. Network Edge can also accept connectivity from physical circuits. You can bring in a carrier of your choice, and this is where you can also connect into outposts, as well as the AWS region that is local for you. And with the smaller form factor of outposts coming later in 2021, it is inevitable that the customer will want high performance AWS services connected to the Equinix fabric to meet their critical needs. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a list of all of the vendors and options that we have today. Uh, Network Edge is something that is always growing and expanding. So not only do we have routers, firewalls, and SD-WAN services there, uh, but you will see other services come to this network hub as we expand it into the future. Um, again, it's high bandwidth speeds, low latency, and fewer hops to any providers to give you that multi-cloud strategy. Next slide. You can try it today. We have a 14-day trial at edgeservices.equinix.com and you can connect in with Network Edge and, and experiment with it, test it out, and there it is. All right, on to the next speaker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hey, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Brad, super helpful. Uh, love the ability to seamlessly leverage AWS innovation uh, across a hybrid cloud infrastructure. Uh, totally awesome stuff. Thanks, Gene, uh, Colin, Ed, for your overviews of the products. Clearly, we're innovating here at Equinix, uh, creating virtual services uh, to help you connect and drive your innovation. Um, as things continue to move towards the edge, including AWS, that seamless end-to-end -end value proposition uh, will persist out to the edge of Equinix. Uh, that is one thing that we can enable for you globally, extending the value of what Equinix and AWS can deliver together to fuel your innovation and your operations. So what we wanted to do was uh, just in terms of wrapping this up, just to say thank you and, and to, to provide an offer, something that we do uh, on a regular basis for our customers is a, called a digital edge strategy briefing. Uh, our global solution architects, our principal architects that uh, some of which you've heard from today, uh, every single day are prepared to come in and talk to you about network optimization, uh, about advancing uh, your uh, innovation with AWS and accessing your digital supply chain in general. 
uh, we can come in and offer you an assessment, uh, ideas to remove any friction in your environment, uh, which allows you to modernize your operations and innovate more with cloud and, of course, maintain that competitive edge. So that is called a digital edge strategy briefing. We also do that in conjunction with AWS. We can do it uh, together or we can do it solo, either one. Uh, but we welcome the opportunity to double click and do something customized for your own individual environment. Um, so when and how to engage us. So there's there's a, a bunch of links down there. You can kind of train your eyes and see maybe who you would potentially want to reach out to. All of us uh, will be able to quickly set up a meeting and uh, discuss what is, you know, what is a good roadmap for you. Uh, and up at the top, you can take a look at the bullets. We do a lot of red, readiness checks so we can pretty quickly identify any friction. Um, we, as I already mentioned, you can leverage our solution architects, uh, the area of depth on networking. Uh, that's pretty incredible. It's what we do every day. As I mentioned at the beginning, all of our customers are starting the conversation with, I've got a cloud first strategy and I want to head to the data center business. And we would be more than happy to happy, uh, happy to help you achieve that. Um, by providing these roadmaps to adapt your current state architecture for outpost and optimize connections to AWS. We also have a 14 day trial for our network edge demo. Uh, and just to punctuate on what that is, that is virtual click through infrastructure delivered at software speeds. That is routers, firewalls, switches, provisioned in a portal delivered at software speed. So we can help you set up new regions uh, and optimize the AWS cloud. So with that, I'd like to wrap and say, we'd love to, to hear more from you. We'd love to help you uh, continue down your path of innovation, OpEx, leveraging cloud, and overall help you succeed with uh, your executive visioning and your top line goals. Uh, so I think that wraps it for us today, folks. And again, thank you so much for, for joining us. We look forward to helping you uh, innovate and drive your business forward with Equinex and AWS. Thank you, everybody. Hey, hey, Todd, this is uh, Tim. I think we wanted to do some Q&A um, if you're able to read off the questions that came in. Ah, fantastic. I can't see it because I'm driving the slides, but if we have questions, let's certainly address those. Thanks, Tim, for calling that out. Certainly. I can read the first one uh, that came in from Owen. It's, uh, can my co-located customers connect to my outpost managed networks and servers directly, or do they need to connect through AWS networks and APIs? Yeah, so I can I can uh, answer that question. This is Brad, and then maybe Gene can add some flavor to that because I think he touched on that in his portion of the presentation. Um, one of one of the new services that's delivered on the outpost uh, is the local gateway. So there are two connections from from the outposts. Uh, one is back to the AWS region, and we talked about that quite a bit. But then. As you can imagine, uh, the, the outpost needs to be able to connect uh, to local resources, whether that's in the co-location facility uh, or on the customer's premises. Uh, and the local gateway facilitates that process. And you know, as Gene mentioned in his portion, uh, Equinix has done quite a bit to help accelerate that process. So Gene, anything else to add there? Uh, you, you actually hit, hit, hit it on the spot there, Brad. So Again, uh, you know, the, they have the private link uh, set up to go uh, back to AWS, uh, your AWS uh, VPC uh, for your instances. And then there's a local gateway, as you mentioned, and that's really the key to accessing uh, your other uh, connectivity options for your, for your wide area network um, to get to other resources that you want to get to uh, with your AWS outpost. And that really involves um, the ability to deploy uh, IT uh, switching, routing, firewall gear, uh, either uh, in a hardware format or in a virtual format. And that was the whole reason that we were talking to everybody on the call about our brand new network edge services, which allows you to deploy that, uh, as Todd mentioned, in a software-like manner uh, and spin those routers or uh, firewalls up in minutes rather than having to deploy them on your own and bring them into the data center. And it could take days or weeks to set that up. So hopefully that answers that question. Yep, that sounds good. I, I see the second one in here is, uh, can I install and use components and server software into my outpost cabinet, which are not normally in an AWS service? So that's a yes and no uh, answer. 
you can install any software that will run uh, in an EC2 instance. Uh, so we have, you know, a lot of organizations that will install software uh, in EC2 in, you know, a Kubernetes environment and an ECS environment. What you're not able to do is add componentry uh, to the AWS rack. Uh, you really need to be thinking about the AWS rack as a piece of the, the AWS cloud, and that's, um, uh, you know, delivered and managed by AWS and, and, and can't be modified by the end user. Okay, and I see question three here is, what was the catalyst and trigger point for AWS to build outposts? And so I'm gonna modify this a little bit. I'll answer that question and then I'll uh, invite somebody from the Equinix team to maybe talk about what was the motivation for Equinix to partner with uh, AWS around outposts. But I think really the, the catalyst or the trigger point here was, was customer demand. Uh, in the sense that, uh, you know, we had a, a large number of organizations that had started to move to AWS to consume AWS services. And they said, uh, you know, we'd really like to be able to consume some of those uh, same services on premises to service workloads that, um, you know, can't easily be be moved to the cloud. So that was the, the trigger point uh, behind uh, Outposts. And we were able to, uh, you know, make outposts generally available uh, at the end of 2019. So anyone want to comment on uh, the, you know, the, the motivation behind Equinix and uh, the partnership with outposts? Yeah, I'll comment. Uh, AWS is a market leader <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just a giant portion of a customer's uh, di overall digital supply chain, I think. Clearly, um, you know, as an early mover in cloud, it presented a, a tremendous economic cost model uh, for customers to take advantage of. And there was early adoption with, you know, S3 and compute, but it's moved so far beyond that. And with the investment in AWS and AWS tools, um, you know, it created the need to connect very quickly, right? So from a direct connect perspective, when you have proximity, when you're, when you're in an Equinix location, if that's where you've already stood up a, a portion of your infrastructure, being able to do like a physical fiber drop to the edge node of AWS cloud to access those resources in a very deterministic way uh, makes total sense for the customer. So together with AWS, we're helping control your costs. Egress, Colin mentioned that earlier. So the economic cost model and the promise comes true, but it goes far beyond that. It becomes a platform for innovation. And, and that's what we really love about this AWS solution is it's become AWS's platform to extend your use of the AWS tools that you've come to know and love and incorporate some, certain applications, as Brad mentioned, that maybe aren't quite ready to go into cloud, but you can, you can leverage the AWS Outpost solution uh, for that. And of course, we have pro that proximity, right, that comes into play. They're, they're literally the adjacency of having the critical AWS edge node infrastructure directly uh, adjacent to a, a private cabinet hosting an outpost solution creates a very elegant uh, way for a customer to grow and innovate and continue on their path of using AWS services. So um, it's been a great relationship uh, for us and, and, and I feel for AWS too, you keep expanding uh, with us. And uh, so the motivation was, was clear, it's helping customers innovate and transform their business. Yeah, I just also add that um, Outpost is uh, not just like a hardware play, it's a software play too. You know, you're bringing the AWS availability zone closer to your uh, end customers and your solution. If you look at the Equinix data center portfolio, you know, we're at the edge and in areas that, you know, just are far away from the current um, AWS availability zones. And so this relationship and partnership is just, you know, created like amazing solutions for the customers and use cases that we talked about today. Yeah, Colin, I, I think Todd and Colin, both great points. And I, and I think that point, especially about it being a software play is important. I mean, we flash up that picture, there's a big old rack of hardware, but really you need to think of it as a service like you think of uh, any other AWS service that's fully managed. And, and I noticed there's one more question here. Uh, are there external hardware options, for example, storage arrays that can be connected locally to outpost hardware. So, so the answer to that uh, is yes. Uh, again, you, you don't put it in the, the outpost rack per se, but 
um, we actually have a broad ecosystem of uh, infrastructure and software partners uh, in our service ready program that have tested uh, their solutions with with outposts. So for example, if you think about storage, um, Pure, Infinidat, Cumulo, Weka, NetApp, and I, I apologize if I'm missing anyone out there, but you know, a broad array of partners that have uh, tested uh, their solutions with uh, AWS and are, are ready to go if you need to take advantage of existing assets or you need specific characteristics for your storage infrastructure. And how are we doing on questions? Do we, do you see any more out there, Brad? I don't, I'm looking at the, the chat window here. Happy to take any live that uh, people have, but I, I don't see any other ones. Okay, well, yeah, folks, I think that concludes our, our presentation today. Again, um, the offer stands to have some customized conversations about your specific environment. We obviously welcome that opportunity. I do want to thank everyone for uh, joining us today. I uh, appreciate your time. Um, clearly, we're in service to what you're doing uh, with your business, uh, both from, from an IT and production operations. Uh, we're there for you we're along with AWS. So thank you, Brad. Thank you to the AWS team for, for joining us. And thank you to uh, all of the folks and the customers and out there on the line. Much appreciated. Have a fantastic day. Look forward Thanks to all. Thank you.